Hello, am I audible? Hello, am I audible? Hello, am I audible? Sir, sir. yes, sir. Okay, audible. Sir, good evening. Good evening. Hello. Hello. Uh, tell me. Sir, good evening. Uh, so just ah, good evening. evening. We'll just start in the Aha, No problem. No. Take your own time.
class. So most of my colleagues are almost or yeah, all my colleagues are there, sir. Second so okay. yeah. Shall we start now? Uh, yeah, I'll just introduce you uh, to my colleagues and uh, kindly mute the audios. I think uh, yeah. noise is there. Okay. Shall we wait or uh, shall we start? To introduce you to my colleagues and we can start. So. Okay. So, so good evening. Uh, yeah, dear colleagues, uh, today we have Dr. Ganesh Gowda, sir. Uh, sir is a consultant neurologist from Nanjapa Hospital, Davangiri. And uh, we will be having a small session uh, from sir on uh, migraine. So let us kindly understand what is migraine order and what are the drugs uh, which we promote to the doctors. And if you have any queries, you can post it on the chat box so that we can uh, take it at the end of the session. So I request sir to please uh, proceed with your session, sir. So that thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, myself, Dr. Ganesh, working as neurologist in Nanjap Hospital Down Gere. Uh, I would like to say thanks to CIPLA team for providing me an opportunity to talk on management of migraine. Okay. Let us know uh, epidemiology of migraine. Most oftenly in uh, OPD practice, we see migraine is most common disorder, most common headache. Most commonly seen in females at around 17% and male patients around 6%. And it causes severe disability in one third of the patients. What is migraine? Migraine, the diagnostic criteria migraine would be patient should have at least five attacks of duration four hours to 72 hours of characters like unilateral location, pulsatile quality, severity and intensity and affecting the day-to-day -day activities. Associated with patient should have at least nausea or omitting or photophobia or phonophobia. Photophobia means patient will have triggering of the headache like due to the bright light or uh, triggering of the migraine headache secondary to the severe noise. So if these characters are present in a person, you can label it as migraine headache. Am I audible? Yes, sir, you are audible. Okay. Okay. Yes, yes. Okay. So what is the pathophysiology of migraine? It is thought to be 
activation of cortical spreading whenever the action potential which generate in the cerebral cortex which will leads to the hyper excitability of the brain that is increase the glu- uh, neurotransmitters like glutamate calcium or decrease in the magnesium level that will lead to the final activation pathway that in turn leads to activation of the trigeminal vascular system trigeminal vascular system so final pathway would be synthesis of substance b calcitonin gene related peptides and neurokinins these are the pain mediators so these chemicals will irritate the nerves and the brain stem nuclei that will lead to the headache so what are the classification of the migraine migraine broadly classified as migraine with aura without aura aura is nothing but abnormal sensory symptoms prior to the onset of the migraine it can be sensory or it can be visual symptom or it may be weakness or it may be hearing symptoms so if a patient is having long duration headache that is more than 15 days in a month or more than eight attacks in a month that is called chronic migraine sometime patient will have associated complications like status migrainosis aura migraines infarctions and migraines aura that is triggering the seizures and some of the episodic uh, these episodic symptoms like cyclical vomiting syndrome abdominal migraine do associated with the migraine so let us come to the hello let us come to the treatment aspect treatment aspect broadly classified as acute treatment and the preventive treatment acute is nothing but during the attack what we give just like analgesics or any steroids or any hydration therapy preventive treatment is to prevent the further attacks of the migraine okay first we'll see about the acute treatment of migraine so in migraine not only treatment patient should be addressed regarding the triggering factor most oftenly headaches would be triggered by irregular sleep insomnia lack of exercises increased stress and uh, trauma all those things also should be addressed whenever you are prescribing the medicine you should tell what are all the trigger factors for the migraine this will help you to future prevention of the migraine attacks so migraine it uh, it has four phases prodromal phase in prodromal phase patient will have fatigability yawning easy tiredness then followed by aura that is abnormal sensory symptoms then proper headache associated with the nausea vomiting light intensities and sound triggers in a post trauma again patient will be having depression like features or low mood or fatigability this is the classical symptoms of the migraine so in acute treatment initially we try with the non specific modalities of treatment like nsaids as commonly we know paracetamol aspirin ketorolac etolac and neuroleptics like metoclopramide dompradon also can be used as a symptomatic part the specific treatment part would be our triptans and ergotamine derivatives let us come to drugs one by one in nsaids commonly we use aspirin up to dose of 1 uh, 1 g ibuprofen up to the maximum dose of 800 mg ketorolac 10 mg tablet you can give to ketorolac up to 60 mg naproxen that is available in a uh, form like 500 and 250 mg preparation diclofenac sodium or ketoprofen or these are the common drugs used in a acute setting to prevent the attack and second drug if a patient is having severe symptoms like yawning nausea vomiting we can use fluorpromazine metoclopramide promethazine ondansetron also useful depending on the patient severity of symptoms we can use the dose and in a case of acute uh, migraine attack we can give uh, steroids also recently study shows that even low dose like 4 mg dexamethasone will also help you to do about the migraine attack maximum dose up to 25 mg better not to use opioid opioid and barbiturates because opioid and barbiturates will lead to the addiction and sometime migraine overuse headache also it causes we can use only in as a rescue therapy even after giving the nsaids and triptans if a patient is having persistent symptom that time we can give opioids or barbiturates routinely you don't use these drugs let us come to the triptan as all of you know triptan mechanism action would be agonist of 5ht1b and 1d receptor agonism that will lead to cerebral vasoconstriction decreases the neuro vasoactive peptides and facilitation of neuronal inhibition all these mechanism will help you to reduce the neurochemicals like calcitonin gene related peptides so finally it will lead to decrease in the headache severity so onset of the headache uh, like onset of the symptom uh, onset of the drug action 
it is thought to be from even from 5 minutes in a case of jalmi jalmi tryptan spray to the other tryptans up to the 20 minutes it will act for a period of 2 uh, to 4 hours so sometimes maximum up to 24 hours in acute setting we can use this tryptans all preparations are available oral preparations subcutaneous injectable preparations are nasal spray preparations will be available the mainly main drawback of tryptans would be we should not use in a patient of heart attack or cardiac arrhythmias or cerebral venous thrombosis peripheral vascular diseases and elderly in this setting we should not use this tryptans commonly used tryptans would be rizatriptan sumatriptan and dalmetriptan other tryptans are almotriptan and elitriptan we'll talk about only commonly used these drugs rizatriptan will come in 5 mg tablet and 10 mg tablets also maximum up to 30 mg we can use whenever you are giving along with the propranol better to reduce the dose of rizatriptan because propranol itself increases the uh, serum concentration of the rizatriptan so whenever you are giving the a propnal along with the rizatriptan better you reduce to half dose of rizatriptan okay sumatriptan as all of you know both the subcutaneous injectable preparation also available uh, dalmetriptan again 2.5 mg and 5 mg tablets are available even nasal spray is also available and other uh, very slow onset triptan sir provatriptan and novatriptan uh, choice of triptan depending on the situation and all the drugs are equally efficacious uh, school of thought uh, tells about the sumatriptan 6 mg is almost equivalent to rizatriptan 10 mg elitriptan 80 mg and almotriptan 12.5 mg so a uh, meta analysis suggested that elitriptan was the best most efficacious drug among the all uh, triptans so routinely what we use is sumatriptan rizatriptan and elitriptan along with our dalmetriptan so let us uh, know about the rizatriptan same mechanism 5ht1b and 1d agonist 5mg 10mg preparation would be available up to 30mg we can give and uh, we can it can be given in migraine with aura and without aura also don't give this tablet during the aura phase better give during the headache phase so uh, maximum one dose can be repeated within 24 hours 24 hours of the period if a patient taking ergotamine better to avoid these drugs and if a patient is having ischemic heart disease and cardiovascular comorbidities comorbidities better you avoid these drugs and uh, rizatriptan acts very fastly uh, thought to be 10 to 15 minutes after giving the drugs and sustained effect at least for a period of 24 hours and patient will be completely asymptomatic within 2 hours of taking the medicine okay and rizatriptan 10 mg was associated with better treatment outcomes than the range of other acute migraine attack acute migraine medications and onset of relief was as early as 15 minutes and was significantly better for rizatriptan at all the time of points and uh, head to head study that is rizatriptan and sumatriptan they have compared both the dr these drugs in the acute attack uh, the rizatriptan have better bioavailability and efficacy as compared to the sumatriptan drug so rizatriptan uh, to treat the early acute migraine attacks it is the better option so pain relief within the 15 minutes of taking the medicine and other like lower the need of other rescue medications and sustain pain free response at least for a period of 24 hours and it has good patient satisfactory outcomes and let us come to the intranasal dalmetriptan in a management of acute attack of migraine so dalmetriptan is very effective it has both central and peripheral uh, action by inhibiting the trigeminovascular activity and decreases the synthesis of cgrp so that it will abort the acute migraine attack so uh, preparation like one pup it will give around 5 mg uh, 5 mg doses so it will help you reduce the uh, acute migraine attack the symptom onset after the uh, after giving the jalmet uh, jalmetriptan sp uh, spray the duration of action would be as less as like within 5 minutes of giving the medicine drug will start acting this is the beauty of the drug so we can use in acute emergency condition and even patient is vomiting or other comorbid conditions also we can use because it is uh, it is uh, like uh, transparent al root even uh, if you give around the nasal spray also it will not cause any nausea vomiting other side effect profile so it will give the pain free period within the 10 minutes and persist up to 
24 hours of uh, duration. So, Jalmitriptan, uh, nasal spray relieves the pain and associated symptoms, producing the higher total symptom relief than the placebo. And it will start action as uh, within uh, 10 minutes of This is one more study. It also says the same things. The duration of action and uh, onset of action is better as compared to other drugs. And it has compared to the placebo. So excellent response as compared to placebo and other tripton derivatives also. So it concludes this. Uh, these uh, following studies conclude that uh, Jalmetripton can be given in acute migraine attack. It acts within 10 minutes. And other associated non-headache symptoms also resolve. And patient can return to the normal activity even after giving the small, even after giving the single dose also, and good patient response. So last, uh, acute, last other drug would be dihydroergotamine. Commonly we don't use because it will causes vasoconstriction. Sometimes it may precipitate the peripheral vascular disease. Sometimes it will causes cardiac acute cardiac event also. It can be used in severe non refractory cases and in young patients. This is available in the form of nasal spray oral tablets and injectable preparation. Uh, Contrastic contraindications would be pregnancy, uncontrolled hypertension, and old history of any stroke. Let us come to the prophylaxis. As I told earlier, all these drugs, what I told earlier were, were only acute treatment, acute migraine attack. Whenever patient comes to the emergency or OPD, severe symptoms of migraine, that time only for acute abortion of those attacks, we can give the before mentioned drug. So next part would be prophylaxis. To prevent the future attack, what all the drugs can be given? I will uh, tell in the next slides, okay? So when to give prophylaxis? If a patient is having attacks more than, like uh, two to six attacks or more than six attacks and which are disabling for the patient. Say for example, patient is having six attacks per month. Our patient is having two attacks which are very severe that are disabling for the patient for his occupation or his work. So in that setting, we need to give regular medicines and the duration thought to be ideally or at least for a period of three months. Sometimes we extend the treatment duration up to six months. So we choose the uh, prophylactic medicine according to the side effect profile. Say for example, if a patient is having seizures along with the migraine, we'll prepare divalproxen, divalprox sodium. If a patient is too obese, want to reduce the weight and meanwhile to reduce the migraine attack, we use topiramide. And if a patient is having hypertension and migraine attack, that time we use metaprolol. Say for example, if a patient is having recurrent attacks of panic attacks, palpitation, in that setting we can use propranolol. These are leptizumab, erinumab, uh, galcanizumab, or monoclonal antibodies. Uh, cost is and uh, two of the drugs are available in India. So commonly we don't use these monoclonal antibodies. And onabutalum toxin, butalum toxin can be used in a refractory cases. And amitriptyline, whenever patient is having features of depression, psychosocial issues, along with the migraine headache, that time we can use amitriptyline. And other drugs thought to be helpful are magnesium preparation, riboflavin preparation, coenzyme Q preparation, melatonin, all these also helpful in the prevention of migraine attacks. And let us uh, see about the recent advances. What are the recent advances? This is called transcranial magnetic stimulation equipment. It costs around 80,000 to 1 lakh. So it will help you to prevent the headache attack and abort the acute attacks also. So by keeping these uh, equipment on the head during the attack, it will help you to reduce the severity of the headache. This is FDA approved, recently FDA approved. The contraindication if a patient is having any seizures or epilepsy, you should not use this, okay? And other are, as I told earlier, these are the newer drugs, calcitonin gene-related peptides, monoclonal antibodies. Nowadays, these are all uh, trending therapies. Uh, in India, I think erenumab and galcanizumab is available. Erenumab, galcanizumab, premazunab, and eptizunab. These are the parental preparation, subcutaneous and intravenous preparation. And remazepine, atosimab, and abrozepine are oral CGRP peptides. These are used commonly. Uh, the newer recent advance is recently in uh, November, Atozipant has approved for the migraine prophylaxis therapy. It is given as 30 mg BD per day or 60 mg once a day. Or Abrozipant, this, is be this will be used to prevent the acute migraine attack. This is also approved by the FDN November 23. 
and recent as uh, i told earlier like same as that uh, jalmetriptan javizipant this is also cgrp agon antagonist this is also used as a nasal spray uh, this has also onset of action within 15 minutes and sustain relief up to 48 hours these are the three newer drugs recently approved by the fda still no it is not available in our market special situation if a patient like children with chronic migraine and children thought to be like nsaids or triptans carries good prognosis and good uh, benefit compared to other drugs in elderly better you avoid ergot derivatives triptans and painkillers so safely we can use acetop acetamaprim cox2 inhibitors opiates in pregnancy better use only paracetamol and opiate derivatives if needed we can use steroids also in pregnancy better you avoid ergotamine dihydroergotamine and triptans so take home message so better first you make the diagnosis properly assess the severity of migraine classify the migraine whether it is acute migraine or chronic migraine educate the people regarding the trigger factors so if you don't only treat the patient with the medicines you also address the trigger factors and um, depending on the patient comorbid conditions and uh, preferences you will opt the prophylaxis therapy and better you treat in the early part because it will help you to make the patient symptom free and further prevention of the attacks and uh, non oral preparation like parenteral preparation injectable preparation also needed during the acute attack because in the acute attack patient will be having severe nausea vomiting so that time we cannot give orally and tell the patient to not take more than 2 to 3 pills of uh, painkillers uh, to prevention of migraine because it will cause us again drug induced uh, medication overuse headache and whenever patient comes to the emergency with acute migraine attack don't forget to give proper iv fluid so because dehydration again precipitates migraine thank you if you have any doubt kindly ask yes sir i had uh, two queries actually what is the drug of choice in chronic cases so like uh... do you prefer combination or you go with a single drug chronic cases means chronic migraine cases chronic migraine cases so. ah, as i told earlier we, you need to assess the side effect like we need to assess the patient comorbid condition if a patient is having chronic migraine along with the seizure better you give divalprex sodium if a patient is having depression amitriptyline mean, if a patient is having panic attacks along with the chronic migraine propnal if a patient is too obese want to reduce the weight having the chronic migraine give topiramate so you need to select the patient profile also so whenever you are giving so i've got the combination of propranolol and flunorazine so which we have like ah uh, initially we will start with the single drug say for an example we will start with the propranolol we optimize uh-huh. the drug propranolol thought to give up to 40 mg so for even after giving the maximum dose of propranolol or if a patient is intolerable to the increased dose of propranolol that time we can add on the flunorazine with 5 mg up to 20 mg we can give so in the setting of refractory attacks even after giving the optimized dose of propranolol that setting we will offer the patient for combination of therapy of propranolol and flunorazine okay so, so sometimes also like uh, skipping a meal also triggers some headache yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yes yes so that is, also come to this uh, migraine attack or it will be a normal headache which is normal headache also in migraine patient migraine attack will be precipitated even in normal person because hypoglycemia because sugar is very important for neuronal function so if a body sugar level drop down after skipping the meals that will leads to fatigability of the neuron even normal person also headache will be precipitated in migraine patient migraine attacks will come so it will cause both normal headache also and it will precipitate migraine also okay so there is one new drug in the market which is uh, i think 5ht uh, antagonist which is there i am not sure about the name lasmi something plasmidetan yes sir ah, uh, recently yeah. it has come yes sir i think so it is, is available in 50 and 100 mg yes yes sir. it is useful for acute migraine attack prevention like as that of sumatriptan resartriptan it will also abort the attack okay and only side effect would be it will cause a sedation you, after giving these drug we need to explain the patient not to drive at least for a period of 6 to 8 hours okay. and it is like uh, it is thought to be in stroke patients and aneurysm patient ischemic heart disease patients also we can give compared to other triptans this is the advantage of lasmidetan we can give in stroke patients also and only side effect is uh, sedation okay. while driving especially so better to avoid uh, okay. driving during the are uh, driving after taking the medicine at least for a period of 6 to 8 hours sure sir 
No, so you said uh, like usage of uh, zolmetriptan uh, and all like uh, uh, do you use uh, more frequently sir zolmetriptan or yes in emergency we use even cluster headache also i use zolmetriptan spray in migraine acute attack also we use zolmetriptan okay, uh, nasal spray sure, sir. because patient can carry and self yes, um, patient can use self without any nursing staff or any doctor home based also they can use in patient get the acute migraine attack Home basis also he can take. Other than other drugs like sumatriptan and other injectable, patient need to come to hospital. The advantage of zolmetriptan would be like self uh, self patient can take by self only without other assistance. So how long can this migraine persist? Like a person uh, for around ten years, twenty years, such thing like. Uh... Most commonly around sixty to seventy percent migraine attack will disappear with thirty to uh, three months to six months. But rest other patients will have sometimes we had seen like 10 years, 15 years migraine patients also we had seen. Most openly we give 3 to 6 months of prophylaxis therapy and proper uh, triggering factor, avoidance of the triggering factors. Fine. Duration classically not defined. So ideally we give 3 to 6 months of uh, prophylaxis therapy. So this uh, like does this migraine uh, lead to some other uh, symptoms or it will persist as a migraine itself or do i mean to say like if, can it be developed into a stroke or something like that yeah migraine one complication would be migraine may cause a stroke like episode in a especially if a patient female patient those who are taking uh, this contraceptive pills progesterone and estrogen pills and along with the uh, migraine attack especially migraine with ara patient if they take that uh, hormonal pins they will have higher chances of stroke episode in a future that will cause us young stroke also and even migraine itself it will cause us brain infarctions migraine related infarction that entity is there but it has high risk for causing the stroke cognitive problems depressions all those dysfunctions will be there migraine insomnia okay sir so like uh, there are few students yeah yeah tell me somebody you want to so this is Pradeep, sir. Uh -huh. Uh -huh, tell me. Uh, sir, uh, in acute migraine, which drug do you prefer the most, sir? Whether it is Zolmetriptan or uh, Rizotriptan, sir? Both are like uh, Zolmetriptan and uh, Sumatriptan. Um, the efficacy is good in Zolmetriptan, they say, compared to Sumatriptan. Efficacy and action of like Zolmetriptan nasal spray will act as soon, like compared to like that uh, Sumatriptan will take 10 to 15 minutes. Zolmetriptan, it will take 5 to 10 minutes. The duration of action would be very quick in Zolmetriptan compared to other drugs. Sir, not Sumatriptan, sir. I am asking about uh, uh, Zolmetriptan and uh, Rizotriptan, sir. Both are equally efficacious. Zolme and uh, Rizotriptan, both are equally efficacious. Which one you prefer the most, sir? I use because Zolmetriptan a little bit uh, high cost and uh, compared to Rizotriptan, mm. so that's why I'm asking you. Side effect profile, both are same. Particularly, I don't know, like Rizotriptan versus uh, Zolmetriptan, particularly, I don't know regarding that. Head-to-head -head trial, I don't know. Sure. Yes, so sir, one, okay, last, sir. one last query, sir. So there okay. are few there are students who face this uh, migraine attacks in much earlier stages, like... And they are in class seven or six. Or yeah, seven. yeah. So, okay. like in long term, will it hamper their uh, the thing, uh, uh, their development, or is it like with the medication they can be fine, sir? Like long term complications of migraine, you are asking, or uh, yes, yes, especially in students with uh, yes, this will ha huh, long term. Like if you don't control the migraine, if a patient is having recurrent attacks of migraine, that will lead to cognitive dysfunction, memory disturbances, depressions. And uh, sometimes like they say higher risk for stroke occurrence if you don't control control the migraine attacks in the earlier part. It will cause psychosocial issues also. So better sure. you treat aggressively migraine. Okay, sir. Yeah. Uh I think uh Felix, do you have any other queries? Uh, I don't think so, sir. So thanks for the wonderful talk and the discussion we had a uh, post talk on the migraine and the other uh, things which we had the queries. So I okay. thank sir once again for the sir. Ah uh, yeah yeah tell it tell yeah who is it? Abhishek, Abhishek sir. Ah uh, yeah. Mm -hmm.
sir what is the use of combination in chronic management sir hello sir what is the use of combination in chronic management combination we use whenever like even after giving the single drug after optimal dose if a patient is having frequent attacks or if a patient not tolerating the maximum dose of sing maximum uh, dose of the single drug that time only we will use the combination of drug routinely we don't use we'll start with the single drug we optimize the dose up to the maximum recommended dose or if a patient having starting the same uh, like say for example sometime we start the propranolol we escalate the dose to 40 mg bd sometime they will develop uh, uh, like uh, memory disturbances bradycardia respiratory symptom that time again we need to taper the dose or we need to add the one more drug if a patient tolerating 40 mg bd again he is getting the attacks again we make it 60 mg bd then 80 mg bd so we will escalate the single dose till the maximum recommended dose there after also if a patient getting the attack that time we will use a combination of drug not directly combination so single drug optimize the dose then you add on the drug yes yeah, sir thank you sir so i think that uh, that's all with the queries sir uh, so thanks for the wonderful talk look and i think from the entire team for the wonderful talk you have given thank you sir okay thank you right thank you sir thank you thank you very much